and did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green and was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen and did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills and was Jerusalem builded here among these satanic mills bring me my bow of burning gold bring me my arrow of desire bring me my spear of clouds unfold bring me my chariot of fire I will not cease from mental fight nor shall sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today we are reviewing this absolutely gorgeous uh, Hulk uh, Submariner. Yep, another Submariner. Well, can you blame me? I do adore them. I'll do a quick wristwatch check. And as we're in diver mode, I'm wearing my uh, little Panther Cub there, the Seiko SKX. It's a modded, based on the um, SKX 013, of course, there. So, uh, yeah, you get a bit of a idea of the scale change. So this is the reference 116610LV. As its name implies, this is truly an incredible Hulk, um, but not just in size, also in, in its unapologetic use of green. Uh, perhaps the most divisive Marmite Submariner uh, you either absolutely adore it or not at all. Um, and I'm basing that on the response from my Instagram post. It's really interesting reading your replies to this, what you guys thought. But anyway, so normally at the beginning of the review, I go into the whole history of the watch and the brand. As we've discussed the Rolex Submariner to death, it's been chronicled many, many times on the channel. I'm just going to cut uh, a long story sh short. And in my opinion, there is no other dive watch on the market today superior to the contemporary Rolex sub. And I really do mean that in terms of true luxury, quality, performance, value, uh, value retention, prestigious heritage, nothing comes close. A few might nip at the heels or excel in, in one of those particular areas compared to the sub, but few dive watches tick all those boxes like the modern beloved Submariner. Here we have a more unique take on what is sometimes a rather ubiquitous watch. Everything is exactly the same as your standard uh, black Submariner, which we'll go into in just a moment. But of course, the dial and bezel is different. But why green? Well, this is a really interesting uh, question. And this color has been associated with Rolex and its brand identity for decades. Many theories as to why, one of the most interesting being it was picked by Rolex founder Hans Wilsdorf in tribute of his wife's Irish heritage. But sadly, I could find no evidence of this. Uh, Wilsdorf, as we've discussed many times, was a massive Anglophile and undoubtedly chose red as the main color of Tudor, uh, especially after naming the brand in honor of the British royal dynasty, the Red Rose, etc., etc. However, the British racing green has actually more to do with the crown logo and nothing really uh, to do with motor racing, as the uh, name of the color suggests. In fact, um, Rolex started using this color before uh, the color British racing green was a thing. It was um, so arguably, you could say it is forest green. Anyway, when the logo is used in advertising, we see it in gold with the green text beneath it, spelling out Rolex, of course. Uh, the gold color of the crown obviously symbolizes precious metals um, that the company uses and portrays an image of luxury and prestige. In the Rolex logo, the green font is meant to represent a color of money. And in combination with the gold of the crown, it evokes a kind of feeling and symbolism of wealth 
wealth and status. The crown itself is undoubtedly a symbol of royalty, meant to convey a message of superiority, and, and wearing a, uh, the Rolex is akin to wearing a crown. Uh, green traditionally is a color of nature, but it also has an ancient meaning and association with ambition, renewal, it's an energetic color. It's associated with meanings of growth, harmony, freshness, safety, fertility, and environment. But this is not Rolex's first green themed sub. There was, of course, the famed Kermit. And despite its relatively minor change, it was very controversial at the time uh, when it was released to commemorate the 50 year anniversary. Uh, of their most iconic timepiece. Invariably, in keeping with the brand image, uh, as we spoke before, they went with green uh, on the reference 16610LV. The Kermit had a rather short lifespan, um, ending production in 2007. And in the whole scheme of things, we got to remember this is quite short, but just like any less common Rolex, it has become highly desired. Uh, it was also the first to be fitted with the new maxi dial, something you might miss at first glance, but of course in its more traditional size and with a the now dated aluminium bezel. So fast forward to this, and here we see a resplendent emerald green dial that is accentuated by that um, absolutely gorgeous sunburst effect. This is actually achieved by mixing gold dust into the maxi dial's paint. And talking of gold, we have, of course, uh, 18 karat white gold applied uh, markers to prevent tarnishing that frames the highly legible and very long lasting chromolite luminescence. And, of course, a corresponding loom pip on the bezel. The dial is uh, complemented by a more restrained, glossy, I, I would describe this as a shamrock green dive time bezel. It has a etched 60 minute graduation markings coated in platinum and is completely scratched as well as age proof, unlike uh, its predecessor. Uh, however, one thing to note is that some of the Kermits have, have really patinaed and got a whole new, more unique color. So it's 120 click, unidirectional, and without a shadow of a doubt, the best action uh, on any um, modern dive watch. And trust me, I have handled a ton of them. The case is your 2008 super case in oyster stainless steel. And although 40 millimeters in diameter, it wears uh, larger, mainly due to these increased uh, lugs here, the beefier, a slightly beefier thickness than the Kermit, uh, which is 12.6 millimeters and about 48 millimeters or 48.1 lug to lug. As you would imagine, the contrast from the brushed surfaces to that high polish, immaculately done and impeccable as always. Uh, we have a uh, scratch resistant sapphire glass there with a Cyclops magnifier over the date at three o'clock there. And as it says proudly on the dial, it is of course 300 meters water resistant, uh, which is assisted by this excellent uh, triple lock screw down crown. Oh, and I forget, I neglect to mention, obviously the lug guards are beefier as well. Uh, you get the Rehort, it being the modern uh, new, new Rolex, that lovely etched Rolex, Rolex, Rolex all the way around. Standard Mercedes hands, which I, I believe are bigger compared to its predecessor, also upgraded with the Kermit, incidentally, when they introduced that maxi dial. The watch comes on the same uh, Oyster bracelet that tapers beautifully uh, with the Oyster, um, Oyster lock safety clasp there, fold over. And of course that little lip there for the crown. A 20 millimeters lug to lug there, so no change there. And of course we have that wonderfully handy glide lock. If I just pull it out, there you go. You can see it can just locks uh, down, so no diver extension needed. This is just incredibly handy, instantly adjustable. Love the glide lock. So how does it wear? Well, let's pop it on the wrist and find out. So on my six and a quarter inch wrist, uh, although of course small, very reassuringly solid feeling, far from understated, but without being flashy. 
and has a hefty total weight of 158 grams, which I must admit takes a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're more used to like vintage subs or um, you know non-tooltastic pieces. So when you switch from lighter watches, it does take a while to get uh, kind of accustomed to it. Better on the larger wrist, but of course this being a diver, it's supposed to be big because of to improve legibility underwater and the instant resizing abilities just make it an an absolute joy to wear. So inside we have one of the best Rolex movements, the redoubtable in-house manufactured chronometer automatic caliber 3135, offering the cutting edge of Rolex proprietary technology, that proven signature movement architecture, the decoration you'd, you'd expect, but it's, it's not there to look pretty. It's really a tough movement. Typical Rolex hallmarks like it's, um, 28,800 vibrations um, an hour, KIF system for shock protection, the microstellar system for adjustment on the Glycidor uh, balance wheel, and a virtually silent bi-directional winding. The paramagnetic blue parachrome hairspring offers uh, greater resistance to shocks and as well as temperature variations. And of course, it goes without saying, it features uh, hacking quick set date, a uh, 48 hour power reserve, your standard unsigned case back. And I love how the end links are just flush with the case. So let's discuss positives and negatives. First, the positives. This is unequivocally the Kipper's Knickers. That has not changed and it's performance. The feeling of quality you get is exactly the same as your standard sub. Uh, I do think it offers a little bit more fun um, it's a little bit less boring than your typical black sub. And it goes without saying, you've got the inherent robustness both inside and out. Like most Rolexes, it has the value retention that uh, all other brands are jealous of. Um, or the green with envy, I could say. Oh, no, terrible pun, sorry. And I have to say, it looks much better in person than it does online. My favorite feature has to be the way the dial changes in light from a rich forest green to a kind of sea green and everything in between. And sometimes even looks black. Uh, the range is very dynamic, it has an utterly beguiling, uh, alluring effect that um, is, is, is enticing. And if green is your color, then this certainly is uh, the watch for you, or perhaps if you were born in May, emeralds being the, the, that particular month's birthstone, uh, then this is undoubtedly for you. The negatives, well, I got to be honest, I'm not in love with the bezel color. It falls a little bit flat, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to kind of detract too much uh, attention away from the dial, which is obviously the star of the show. I kind of wonder what a reverse Kermit would have looked like. Um, maybe even this, but with the Kermit configuration, would, would that have had less of a Marmite effect? Who knows? I'll, I'll throw up some quick um, renditions so you can see what that would look like. I would almost like to see this sunburst effect in black, you know? I think that could be really, really cool. The main negative here it has to be the fact that it's not going to work with every outfit. If you're fussy when it comes to color coordination, uh, it will clash. I found myself limited to wearing very neutral or dark colors. Um, also, it is rather higher priced than your normal version. I mean, at the end of the day, typical Rolex fashion, it will be a short run and eventually they will be just as desired and, and lusted after as the Kermit. Yeah, it's not easy being green. Um, not compatible with the most straps, certainly not a, a strap monster like your typical uh, black and white color scheme there. While the dial is stunning, I have to say, I prefer the color scheme of its predecessor. Perhaps this is a little bit too green. Uh, it, green is not a color I wear, this is certainly an acquired taste. But yeah, a rather obvious negative, but aside from that, and while not really my cup of tea or many people's cup of tea, the Hulk is a refreshing and lively twist on the greatest dive watch of all time. People often complain Rolex is a bit boring and they all look the same, but in this incarnation, a little bit of pizzazz without being blingy or tacky to what is ultimately a robust and enduring functional design that will last forever. 
Um, so it still gets the pure class seal of approval. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know your thoughts and queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it, especially what you think of the Hulk. What is your favorite Submariner? Love to hear that. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Now, before I go, guys, I just wanna quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch-related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive, onwards and upwards.